Welcome back to our series of videos on parabolic spanning structures, which may either be arches or bow trusses. In this video, we are going to explore the benefits of using elements with continuous curvature versus parabolic elements with a series of straight segments approximating the continuous curve. The curved compression member in the top image consists of straight segments that change direction abruptly, albeit subtly, at every joint. The curved compression member in the bottom image consists of continuously curved segments where there is no change in direction at the joints other than the curvature that is occurring everywhere else along the member. The structural form in the bottom image is more likely to be the choice for shorter spans where we will want to fabricate the top compression member as a continuous member with no joints or breaks. The structure at the top image is more common for long spans where it is less likely that, we'll cur that we will curve the heavy members and that we will be and where we will be dealing with extremely long members. Uh, that would that this type of structure would entail managing those strong mem those long members and curving them and transporting them would be challenging in addition to those issues there is a preference for one or the other of these forms based on whether the spanning member is going to be subjected to point forces on the joints or continuously distributed loads along the top cord segments. This is a compression system with straight segments subjected to point loads which are delivered by these long vertical elements. Uh, here there's compression, down below there's tension. Similarly here we have compression there and tension there. But the key point is that the loads are fairly uniform along the horizontal corresponding to a portion of this building which is spanning from there to there. And these are definitely point forces. There are no loads introduced along the length of this member, only at the joint. There is some self-weight from the weight of that member, and that was actually accounted for with a very, very subtle curvature. But because the overwhelming load is the point load of the floors, uh, the floor beams that attach at these key points here, there, there, and so forth, we're going to say that this is overwhelmingly a point loaded structure. This is also a point loaded structure. Uh, in this case, though, we have a continuous smooth curve because this element was rolled to take on that shape, uh, it would be more trouble than it would be worth to sort of break the member here, do a straight segment, weld it, another straight segment, weld it again. It's easier for a fairly modest sized truss of this sort to just roll it as a continuous curve. We're going to talk about the structural advantages and disadvantages of that. The key thing here is that the glass is delivering the loads here and there and there, and those loads are being transmitted through these horizontal struts and subsequently absorbed by this curved spanning member. This is also a spanning member. In the previous case, this was rolled as an arc of a circle. In this case, it's the shape of a parabola. It's a continuous smooth curve, which has point forces being delivered to it here and there and there and so forth. So first let's took, take a look at the structure with the straight segments between the joints as shown in this top image. So we have straight segment, straight segment with a, an abrupt change in the angle there. This is the smooth curved element we're going to start by focusing on this geometry. 
In the left is depicted the behavior of the structure subjected to point loads. So here we have point loads on each of the joints. In the right is depicted the behavior of the structure subjected to a continuous load. So we have a continuous load here, which in magnitude is equal to the sum of all these point loads. When we do the analysis, we see that the axial compression, which we're observing here, is very similar to the axial compression there. So in other words, we're not seeing much difference in axial compression based on the discrete loads versus the continuous loads. And the same is true of the axial tension in the bottom cord or the tie member here. The really big differences that we observe are that we have zero bending stress in the case where we have point loads and straight segments. But in the case where we have this continuous load, we have load between the vertices that are inducing bending in these top cord members. And that bending stress is manifest as this classic parabolic variation. Now, I haven't bothered to put in the, in the numbers, but for this particular truss that we analyzed, these bending stresses were 40 or 50% higher than the worst of these axial stresses. So in other words, we're designing this thing with the thought that it's primarily an axially loaded system, that it's functioning as an axial member system, but in fact, the bending stresses on these top cord members are fairly severe, and they're in fact more severe than the worst of these axial stresses. So this is a pretty dramatic difference between this situation and that situation. The diagram at the bottom uh, shows the deflection, in this case for point forces on the straight segment top cord, in this case for continuous loading, and you'll notice the bending that's being induced, or the bending deformation, which is what's leading to these bending stresses. So for this situation, we would say the straight segments seem to be more appropriate uh, for point loading, um, and certainly where we have straight segments involved, we'd probably prefer to not have this continuing lo continuous loading between the joints. Now let's look at the structural behavior of the structure with the continuously curved top cord. Under point loading, again we discover that in point loading versus the uniformly distributed load, our axial compression stresses are very similar between the structure on the left and the structure on the right, the only difference being the loading condition. Uh, very similar axial tension stress, but again, we observe huge differences when we get to bending stress. Um, in this case, we have this odd kind of tendency for the top cord, which is curved, and when it's put under compression, it tends to bow upward and that upward bowing uh, is manifest in a bending stress. In this case, it's bowing upward. In the previous case, it was bowing downward, and we were getting this positive bending stress. In this case, it's bowing upward, and we're getting this negative bending stress, which just has to do with how we define positive and negative bending stress or positive and negative moment. So in this case, it's quite apparent that this is the less preferred case. In other words, if you have a continuous curve on this top cord, it's not preferred to have point forces like this because you induce these weird pop-up bending deformations. Um, and this load is more appropriate because in a way, each one of these curved elements is like a little arch between that point and that point and that arch is perfectly shaped to serve that function. And in the end, we don't end up with those weird bending deformations in these curved elements. So the smooth curvature is more appropriate to a uniformly 
distributed load, it's less appropriate to these point forces on the joints. So the deformation shown in the previous diagram will occur in these curved elements under outward suction, which is going to produce a force in this direction at each of these joints. There's going to be a tendency for this curvature to become exaggerated. Um, likewise, under wind force against this wall, these elements are going to become stretched out and they are going to also induce um, a moment uh, in the opposite direction or also an associated bending stress in the opposite direction. So we have the same kind of problem here. We've given this a continuous curve because it looks really nice. Um, it's, it is much more pleasing to the human eye to see this continuous curvature, but we have point forces applied to it. So this seg segment is going to tend to bulge upward, as is that one and that one and so forth, under the gravity loads that are being applied here. You'll notice in this case, this member has been made fairly deep, which is helping to resist those bending stresses. And in the end, they won't be particularly significant because as a bending element, this is a very strong shape. In summary, we would like straight segments for the case of point loads on the top joints. Um, we do not want straight segments for the uniformly distributed load. Likewise, for the smooth curve, the continuous curve, we do not want point forces. We want the continuous load. And it's a simple mnemonic device. You want uh, straight segments for the point forces, which are discrete forces. You want continuous curvature for continuous load. That ends our video on continuous curve versus straight segments in uh, parabolic arches or bow trusses.